In the earliest period, as we've said, New Testament manuscripts were on papyrus. These are basically plants grown in Egypt and then exported as sheets all around the Roman Empire. But um, this dependence on Egypt was not always a positive thing. And so people developed and, in a sense, continued to use animal skins for, for books. The Bible, um, although conceptually it's there in the late second century, is physically there only from the fourth century onwards. Um, because earlier on you would have to, in a sense, construct your Bible from a manuscript of the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, a manuscript of Paul, you know, a manuscript of Acts, and, other, and that would be your Bible, but it's all in separate pieces. And it's all of a sudden in the 3rd and 4th century, you can create a book which contains a large number of documents, which previously had to be separate. Um, the four Gospels could easily be contained within a uh, parchment book. The whole New Testament could be contained within a parchment book. The whole Bible... Greek Old Testament and Greek New Testament could be contained in the vast Greek Bibles produced in the 4th and 5th century. The, the other great advantage about um, parchment manuscripts is they, they simply last a long time. So we have, uh, we still have the, these whole Bibles, some of them anyway, that were constructed in the 4th century, Codex Vaticanus, Codex Sinaiticus, uh, and others as well from the 4th and 5th century, that have been preserved in libraries from that time to now and are now available to study. We'd customarily categorise these into what we call unseal manuscripts or majuscule manuscripts, which are manuscripts where, which are all written in capital letters, which extends up until the 9th century. And we have about, the current list goes to 318 of these types of manuscripts. Now again, some of them are complete and others are just a fragment of you know, what once was complete, but now only one sheet survives. In the ninth century, there's a transition, another transition. It's a bit similar to the transition in the, in the third and fourth century between papyrus to parchment, where we know in the fourth century that church leaders were copying material that had been on papyrus onto parchment codices. Uh, in the ninth century, we have another transition, which is from the very large and spacious unseal text to um, a more flowing and uh, tightly packed uh, lower case, what we call minuscule texts. And then from the 9th century to the 15th century, we have a, a really, what we know about is in a, in a sense an explosion of manuscripts of this type um, from the 9th century onwards, in which we have you know, hundreds from each century uh, still in existence. Uh, in a sense, that's where the great bulk we sometimes talk about having 5,000 manuscripts or more than 5,000 manuscripts of the Greek New Testament. Um, well, the vast bulk of those do come in, in the period between the 10th and the 15th century. So we have a, a very good knowledge of the text. In fact, too good. There's too much material to study from that period. Um, but again, it, we also have these fantastically substantial early material, which is really the core and base of the New Testament as, as we would know it now. Well, I have here copies of two of our most important manuscripts of the Greek Bible, Codex Vaticanus here and Codex Sinaiticus here. Well, the combined uh, witness of these two manuscripts, Vaticanus and Sinaiticus, is absolutely fundamentally important to our, to our knowledge of the, the Greek New Testament as a whole and in, in its detail. The Codex Sinaiticus is one of our most important manuscripts of the Greek Bible. It was found in the 19th century in Mount Sinai, St. Catherine's Monastery in Mount Sinai. It contains the whole Greek Bible, at least originally. Some of the Old Testament's been lost. Um, it contains the whole New Testament, all the Matthew, Mark, Luke and John Acts, the Catholic Epistles, the Pauline Epistles, the Book of Revelation, and even some extra material as well after that. It's a magnificent copy, as you can see. It's got eight columns to an opening, absolutely clear writing, um, very suitable for use you know, in, in, in churches, in, in, in reading, even in scholarship. It's um, absolutely fundamental to our knowledge of the text of both New and Old Testaments, actually, but certainly the Gospel texts, um, because it's so complete. Everything is there.